Hey everyone, welcome to Comic Shop Talk here on the Tales of the Flipside channel. We are going to talk about benefits of being a retailer. Actually, just one of the benefits. Uh, previous years, we used to get uh, free passes, one day free pass from Diamond uh, for retailers to New York City Comic Con. This year, Lunar kicked in and got us four day passes. Uh, the first day uh, was the Thursday. They provided a breakfast. So here we are, just about to begin the Lunar Retailer Pro Breakfast. There are hundreds and hundreds of comic book dealers here in the room. My guess is around 500. And then an industry uh, mixer at the end of the night. Uh, and then symposiums and panels through the whole day. Reading comics when I was about nine years old. And of course, you know, I was into the Supermans and the Spider-Mans, but... They had to shoehorn my presentation Perfect. into a lot of things that were already set up. About the Energon universe. And they pretended to have technical difficulties for at least 30 minutes this morning while they set it up for me, so... Imaginary stories, the sort of out of continuity stories. And so when I didn't pitch the idea of a zombie apocalypse DC... Just hear about this new way that comic stores were getting comics and... The passes were, not only were they four-day passers, but they were pro passes. So we were able to go in through, uh, they called it the blue section. If you've been to Comic-Con, you know where the Starbucks is when you first walk in. That's the entrance we could use. We didn't have to be in the cattle line of all the people, uh, the unclean people. <laughs> That's a joke. Not a good one, but it is one. Um, so you could go through there. And so we went down on Wednesday to pick up our passes. You can pick them up Tuesdays and, Tuesday and Wednesday before the start on Thursday. The doors are actually open to go get, pick up your pass. Very painless. Uh, they had us on the list. All went well. Um, now, that's a great benefit. The bigger benefit is actually going to the panels and listening to uh, people talk. And you can see where the, the movers and shakers in the business uh, the people who are getting listened to, where they are pushing the comics scene. And you can make your voice heard, all right? You can pull one of those people aside. You actually could sit down with them. They had, uh, so Comics Pro was there. Oh, so Comics Pro was there. It looks like they're actually getting a lot of meetings with Marvel and DC. They're moving in a direction to start collecting data from all the stores. Uh, on sales so that we could have some stuff that we could look at and know what's selling, where it's selling, and how it's selling. Um, so I'm very interested in, in, in all of that stuff. And they had a little panel about what they think the future of comics is. That was a little bit upsetting. Uh, it seems like people are too easy and too easily moved into something what they think is the future. Um, there was a lot of, you know, talk about there won't be any, there will be very little children's comics anymore. They're moving them into uh, like a manga size books. They're still comics using comic characters from Marvel and DC, but they're allowing Scalactics to make most of it and they're putting it in that manga form. I have a, just as this is my belief is that, uh, you know, you make the connection with the item uh, at an early age. I made mine when I was about seven or eight. Everybody I've talked to, you've, if you've been watching for a long time, uh, people that are in the business, when I always ask them, you know, what, what got you into comics? It's, they always have a story about early childhood, uh, you know, getting that first comic book and what it meant to them. And that's why you have long, that's why people are collecting them into their 50s. It's that childhood attachment to them. Now, are the stories worth it that we're reading? Yes. Is the art form wonderful? Yes. And there are some people that find comics later on in life. But for the most part, people get it into it when they're young. And if you train them to, eat, to read manga size, when they get older, they're gonna want mangas. Now, will, I mean, I know Marvel and DC have already made adult mangas using their characters. It's gonna to be tough if we don't train people to read floppies. 
my constant push at my store in everything I say and whatever everybody I talk to. Um, a lot of people just have defeatism and they just are like, oh, it's over, that's gone, we've moved on, now it's mangas. Uh, it's like how much, how trade paperbacks have been selling like crazy. Um, if you train people to read trade paperbacks, that's what they'll read. Um, they do that by this six issue arc now everybody has to have so that they can make a trade paperback out of it. If we started a couple of lines of stories that begin and end in every book, what's, what's been real popular lately? What's, what's the, what have we seen a rise in? We've seen a rise in books like Ice Cream Man, um, anthologies. These are stories that begin and end maybe two issues, but for the most part begin and end in one issue and you even see Marvel and DC doing these. A lot of times they'll call them a one shot or they'll have a series that is um, like the uh, Harley Quinn series that's out now. Uh, is it black, black, white, and red or redder, something like that. Uh, you know, my memory, I tell you guys all the time, it's, it's fading, but that also is anthologies of one, one hit sh um, one shots, uh, even eight pages long. Um, that gives a place where people who aren't familiar with a character, they can go in and see the beginning and end of a story and kind of figure out whether they like the voice of that character or not and do they have any connection to it. When you tell somebody like it's issue three and you're like, oh, you gotta get issue one and two or you're not gonna know what's going on, it, it, it's a tough sell. But let's get back to retailer benefits. <laughs> now that I've gone off on my tangent. Uh, my soapbox, I'm up on it quite high. Uh, Maybe, maybe not a soapbox, maybe it's uh, the high horse I'm on. I, it's one of those things, I'm there. So that whole day was great because uh, it was a decent breakfast, pretty good. Um, we also got to see Paul Levins and uh, Jim Shooter and um, Milton, I don't remember Milton's last name, uh, but he is used to run Capital Distributors and now runs the I, ICV2 uh, magazine. Uh, it's the it's the trade magazine for comics and collectibles and pop culture. Uh, if you own a shop, you probably get it in the mail. They talked about comics in the most spectacular, wonderful way uh, to see men that are even older than me. And man, you can see that when they talk about certain projects that they did when they were, you know, years ago and you see the, the sparkle in their eye, the sound in their voice, and how much they actually love, really love comics. It was, it was wonderful to see. And, you know, uh, they had a lot to say about the variant game, how it, it's really ruining comics. They uh, talked about, you know, how the, a lot about how the industry should be moving and where they should be moving to. And then we had a panel with several people from Comics Pro. Um, they also had uh, the person who beat me in the uh, Eisner Award. Uh, well, they beat 22 of us, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, the winner of the 22 Eisner Award made a speech. Um, and uh, they did a good job. Uh, they, they had a lot of good things to say. Their shop is beautiful. Um, and they do a lot of outreach to the community, um, which, you know, I really appreciate. I think that's something every shop should do. You know what I say all the time, comic book store owners are the stewards of this hobby. If you're doing things uh, to make a buck um, and, you know, you just burn down the industry, you're, you're, you're bad for the business. It's just, it's just that this is a business that has to be cultivated and constantly tended. It, you know, it's, um, you have to support, if, you know, some of the greatest creators came out of really bad independence. Jim Lee's first work, Samurai Santa. Uh, you've, you've seen that book. Like, I mean, I mean, it's been on YouTube. It's been everywhere. Um, it's awful. Uh, but if he didn't get those opportunities, in some of these independent books, we wouldn't have him, we might not have had him 
in DC and Marvel, right? So you have to look at these really tiny independent books and try and support them, right? Um, you know, if they're awful, you know, you don't have to support it, but you know, if there's good content and you can see some something in them, you should, and it's a benefit to you to, to foster these guys because if you foster them for a long time and then they make it, uh, there's a good possibility they'll return that favor in uh, signed books and doing signings in your shop, um, you know, because they remember that you were there when, you know, Marvel and DC weren't, right? So that's another way you can benefit your shop as a retailer. Again, another tangent, back to Comic-Con. What I do when I go to Comic-Con, I try to go around to all the publishers, even the small publishers. I think that's where I was going with the independents. Um, I like to meet them and talk to them, and I try to find out, you know, is it, would it be better for me to go direct with them? How's it for them? Is direct to the comic shop better, or do they just want me to continue to order right through Diamond? Um, or if they have a, with Lunar. Um, I don't think any of the indies have an exclusive with Lunar, but I could be wrong. There could be one or two. But the, um, it's really great to meet them and they really want to meet you because you are their customer, especially the small independents. The, the word of their book is not getting out, right? You're the one that tells people about it, reads it, and then hand sells it. And it's important to make contact with the people at the company because there's lots of stuff, promos, that you're not gonna get through Diamond that you will get through them. You're gonna get uh, posters and stickers and you know maybe t-shirts and hats. This one I bought myself. I actually wear my, have my glasses on it, but Ahoy Comics, I bought this in Baltimore. I love Ahoy's books. Sadly, they don't sell that well for me, but I think they make a really great product. Uh, great, great, great art, fantastic stories. More people should be reading Ahoy books. Um, that includes at my shop. So if you're from my shop and you're re watching this, read some Ahoy books. Then there's other things. If you're running other products, um, you know, maybe some cons don't have as many dealers there, but there was a lot of stuff. We, we have a good role-playing community. So there was a lot of um, dice companies there, and there was a lot of people that were doing uh, these interesting uh, low-cost add-on role-playing items, which I'm very interested in, in possibly buying. They had card decks, spell decks, uh, a lot of different stuff that TSR really doesn't keep stocked at our distributors. Um, well, that'd be Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro. Um, like a lot of these smaller priced items, they don't have for us to buy on a regular basis. Um, they have a lot of Dungeon Master screens made by third party companies, and they're in that, like, Dungeon Dragons books are like $50 each. So when you can get like an, a, a $9, $9.99 or 10, I don't do 9.99s, a $10 item. Uh, when a person comes in, there's not a new role-playing book from Dungeons and Dragons. They wanna buy something that, cause they're gonna have a game and they wanna show it off to the other players or, um, or to their dungeon master. So they had a lot of great, cool things. They had a, one of the companies had a, um, like a toy, uh, 75 cents, you put in 75 cents, you turn it, and they had these scrolls. And so like you could, before you start your game that day, if you were doing it in the store, you could spend 75 cents and get this little paper scroll, and your your character could use whatever item came through that, and you just worked that out with the, the dungeon master. So that's a, like another, and that's just 75 cents. Like these are all add-ons that you, to survive, you really need to continue to find and you know, high profit margin items like this. That's another benefit that you're gonna to get to meet. Going to these Comic Cons, you're gonna to get to meet all these different companies that are selling stuff that you already sell in your store. Also, it's kind of a vacation. Like I went down there and stayed, uh, I stayed in Jersey and I took the ferry over from Weehawken every, every day and uh, we ate in the city and I saved all my receipts and it's a tax write-off because it's a business trip. And if you love this kind of stuff, that is the about best business trip you could get, you know? You're, you're at Comic-Con, 
you're in New, in New York City and uh, everything is, uh, you can write off everything. And it is a, an absolute uh, real business trip where you're making real connections and networking is the number one thing while you're there. You also can meet a lot of minor stars. If you wanna do signings in your store, go around and meet those guys that don't have long lines and talk to not them, but talk to the person who, who is managing them that usually handles the, these signings. Hook up with one of those guys, find out what they'll come to your shop for, and believe it or not, sometimes it's a lot less than you'd think. Um, we do our signings as like a benefit to the community. We don't usually charge anything for it, but it is very lucrative. We have a local store not too far from us who almost does a signing every week. They do wrestlers, they do comic people, they do toy people, and um, you know, they do very, very well. Um, it, it is a, and there's another add-on. Uh, and they do, I think they're, they do their thing through Eventbrite. You know, Eventbrite makes some money. But you know, they know they ha how much they have to pay for that, for those guys to come in and autograph. And then they just figure out how many tickets they have to sell, set it up to make some money. And you know, it's people come through your store, you know. It, it, you know, I always say that, it's about traffic. You gotta get people into your store. And if, uh, you know, a, a signing can do that, this is a great place to find a ton of people. Uh, now, are you gonna get uh, Chris Helmsworth's manager to uh, talk to you about, you know, maybe if you got 50 grand to have him sit in your store. But um, Cactus Jack was there. There was a lot of wrestlers there. There was, a, uh, the Power Rangers were there, the original Power Rangers. There was a lot of them signing. And I, I think that you like in the, you know, thousand to five thousand dollar range depending on the how big the star is and I and I think you know that that's that's doable uh, it's about a third of what you'd have to pay to make an exclude to have an exclusive comic um, and I think it's a little bit more exciting it's something uh, you're gonna if you have a lot of items for the person you bring in then you're gonna get a lot of sales of people buying stuff to um, to get signed that's another benefit is in that networking is you can find other things than just the items. There's also people to meet and uh, the connections are great. I just, I talked to the people at Scalactic. I said, hey, I'm a Scalactic dealer for two years. I'm a very small market. I don't buy a lot. I said, but you know, I'd like to get some promotional stuff. I'd like to get some uh, cardboard stands and so forth. I, and he said, the guy was like, you didn't get that when you started. You, we were supposed to send you a, a, good, a welcome kit. I said, I never got any kit. So he was like, let me take your name and number and uh, I'll make sure they send you a welcome kit. So, you know, it's good to, you know, the networking, but also then, you know, tell people what your experience been, has been with their company. So there's a lot of stuff out there to do with con and, you know, New York Comic Con's not the only one. Diamond usually has a retailers uh, also. Last year they had it in Dallas. So I wasn't able to go that one. It kind of was a really late with my regular job, I wasn't able to coordinate some time off. So we did, uh, we weren't able to make the diamond one, but I really love the diamond one because, you know, uh, as much as people hate on them, they are really, really steeped in, in making comics a thing that lasts forever. Um, a lot of people don't know that Steve Jeppe uh, donated his uh, large collection to the uh, Library of Congress. You know, he doesn't advertise, he doesn't talk about it, but he, uh, yeah, so they have, they're gonna start doing a display at the Library of Congress for comic books. You know, and there's a lot of things that, you know, when you're talking to people and they foo-foo comics, I'm like, they think, uh, you know, things are as American as apple pie. Apple pie is not American. We make apple pies, yes, but it, the apple pies were made before they were in America. Comic books, comic books are 100% American. They're everywhere now but they were invented uh, in America. They were such an influence on the culture in America that the Congress had meetings on it. The seduction of the youth, something like that, was about how comics were so bad for the young people. So I like to support them too. I, I still do a lot of my stuff through them. Uh, they have other stuff to, you can buy through them. And yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, it's not a perfect relationship, but I want to be in business with people are, who are just not looking to make a dollar, but um, are looking to support this 
way into the future. So keep reading comics and open a comic shop. <laughs>